Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation which will be about quantum linearization attacks. This is a joint work with Xavier Bantin, Gaëtan Laurent and Maria Naya Plesensen. So I will start this presentation by a little introduction and some context on uh, quantum attacks in symmetric cryptography. Then we're going to see precisely what we do here, uh, quantum forgery attacks on message authentication codes. And then I introduce the new attack. So in symmetric crypto, uh, when we come to the uh, security against quantum adversaries, there are actually two main uh, kind of attackers we can consider. In the first uh, setting, let's say what we call the Q1 uh, model, the adversary has quantum, uh, can do quantum computations, but he can only make classical queries to a black box, for example, a cipher with a secret key. This is the more realistic model. And this is also the model in which, for example, you can think of applying reverse algorithm to uh, recovery of the key. And in this situation, so far, we have been playing only polynomial speedups on our symmetric crypto attacks. Now, there is a stronger model, strictly stronger, in which the adversary can do quantum computations, but he can also query this black box from inside a quantum algorithm, which means this uh, black box, which contains a secret, uh, right, can uh, become a quantum oracle or a superposition oracle. And uh, this allows new attacks. In particular, this allows some breaks and some exponential speedups on attacks that didn't exist uh, classically. This is also a model in which basically you don't put any restriction on what the adversary can do with this oracle, with this oracle. So perhaps it's also actually more suited if you, if you want to prove the security of uh, these constructions, of some constructions in the uh, quantum world. So these quantum superposition attacks uh, work usually this way. Um, you have a symmetric construction and you're going to target its structure. So usually you can abstract out all the subcomponents that you use in there. It's really the structure that is attacked and uh, it has a classical security proof, but there is a way to use a quantum hidden shift or hidden period algorithm, a dedicated one, to uh, break this construction using superposition queries. So basically you translate this, uh, the, the key recovery problem or state recovery problem into a hidden period problem. And then you use a dedicated quantum algorithm to solve this problem. And this is where we need superposition queries to the construction. A typical uh, tool that we use, and the one that, we, that we're going to use today, is Simon's algorithm. It solves the following problem. You have a function, and the function has a period. Or, let's say, it is either injective, or it is 2 to 1 with a period, a Boolean period. So, uh, if you take x, and if you take x, xor, your period, you have the same image. And you want to determine the case, or to find the period, if it exists. Now, Simon's algorithm is really powerful. Um, with a single superposition query to f, you can sample a random vector that is orthogonal to the period. And of course, if you do that n times or a linear number of times, you can uh, have enough information to recover the period with a linear system. Now, what we mean by superposition query uh, is you actually apply f on a quantum state. And this quantum state can be an arbitrary superposition of all possible input values. This is why we say superposition queries. But we're, we're not going to enter into any more details of the quantum algorithms, since we can use Simon's algorithm as a black box. Uh, it's, it's important to note that the original problem wasn't a cryptographic problem, because the function was 2 to 1. But if f is a random function, uh, with the only promise that it has a period, the algorithm is still going to work. So in this paper, we introduce an attack which we call the quantum linearization attack. And it's a new way to use period finding uh, and algorithms such as segments to target symmetric uh, constructions, and in particular, max. So we create new forgery attacks on many max constructions. Uh, we also end up using more algorithms than just segments. We uh, use uh, Deutsch's algorithm, uh, Schwarz's algorithm. And there are, many, there are many targets that are concerned by this. Uh, many max that uh, parallel, parallelizable max and, and also beyond burst dependent max and so on. Um, we also obtained, for example, a new superposition attack on polynomial 305, 
The previous one had two to the 38 queries, and this one has uh, 32 about about 32 queries. Okay, but let's uh, let's see the cryptographic context now for the for these attacks. So we're studying Max uh, mostly, and uh, a Mac a message authentication code is simply a function that, uh, given a certain secret key k and on a message of any length, produces an authentication tag. So what we want uh, of this Mac is that it must be unforgeable. So an adversary that is making chosen message queries, that is querying the Mac with uh, chosen messages, shouldn't be able to come up with a valid tag for a message he hasn't queried. Now, um, we can also consider Macs that admit an additional input, the initial value, IV, or a nonce. And the role of this input is to, uh, is, is to be a random uh, value or a non-repeated value that the adversary is not going to control. And, th and then the definition adapts uh, easily because we just say the adversary shouldn't output a valid triple IV message tag for a new IV message he hasn't created before. Uh, we can consider max with IVs or without IVs. Uh, but for now, we will start with Max uh, that use AVIS. What does a new message mean in the quantum setting? This is the main question because the adversary now is making superposition queries to the Mac. Uh, and a superposition query possibly contains all the messages in superposition. Fortunately, there are appropriate definitions in the quantum setting. The first one was uh, what we call uh, plus one unfortunability by Baudet and Zonry. And there we just say the adversary makes Q queries and he shouldn't be able to output Q plus one valid message tags. Uh, there is a stronger definition which was developed uh, at EuroCrypt20 um, and it's blind unforgeability. So the adversary is making blinded Mac queries so he can only uh, query the Mac basically on a subset of the messages and he shouldn't be able to output the tag of a message that is outside this subset. And even stronger, there is the security as a quantum pseudorandom function. In there, the adversary really cannot distinguish at all the Mac from a random function. So all these notions, um, well, being a pseudorandom function implies blind unfortunability, implies plus one. So we we'll just focus on breaking plus one, and this breaks all the other notions. So let's take an example. Um, and this would be the uh, tag part, the uh, tag computation in OCP. Uh, OCP is a mode in which you do the encryption and also the authentication at the same time. But then we only consider here the, the, the authentication. So it's based on a block cipher. Uh, you have all the associated data blocks which are uh, controlled, they're part of the queries. Um, the n-bit blocks, we exalt them to offset values which are secret values. We encrypt uh, through EK and um, we store everything and then we add a message checksum and we obtain our n-bit tag. So the assets should be secret and also each time we do a query we change the IV. Okay? So what can a quantum adversary do on that? Well, um, let's take an empty message so we don't, don't have to care about the message and then we take two n-bit blocks. Uh, which are equal, 2 n bits uh, equal uh, 80 blocks. And we look at the input and we look at the Mac with these two blocks and they both are equal. And we observe that actually uh, there is an equality between coding the Mac with these two blocks X and coding the Mac with these two blocks uh, X plus S where S would be the XOR of the two offsets of delta 0 and delta 1. Because XORing the two offsets just means we're basically exchanging the blocks, but the blocks are equal, so exchanging two equal blocks uh, gives the same value. Um, and then we have that. We have this periodicity. Well, that's nice. Um, but then you can say, well, the IV is changing at each query. But it's not really a problem, because Simon subroutine uses a single query anyway. And once you have done that, you obtain a vector orthogonal to the period. So what really matters is that the period stays always the same. Just making uh, new queries to different functions, but since it's always the same period, you can still 
uh, you can still end up recovering it. So after making a few queries to the Mac, a few quantum queries, we uh, find the period S. And once we know S, we can actually double the number of tags uh, that we output by making queries. Because we know that any message that starts with uh, A0, A1, and any message that starts with A1 plus S, A0 plus S, we have the same tag. Because S corresponds to exchanging uh, the two offsets. So we can output from a single query two valid triples, in that case, message, IV, and tag. And of course, we break the plus one enforceability. So all these previous attacks on Max, they, they did all that, that consisted all in um, finding out uh, uh, a hidden period problem. And this usually happens because there is a control value. Uh, in our case, the AD blocks, which is XORed to a secret value. In our case, the offsets. And you can use this hidden period problem as a recovery of this internal secret value. And once you have that, then usually there is, this can yield some internal collision, which uh, increases the number of tags you can produce by Mac queries and completely breaks the enforceability. Which brings us to the idea of uh, our new attack. And to, to see how it happens, uh, we're going to start by trying to avoid uh, the attack that I just presented on OCB. Uh, let's remove the offsets to make life difficult for a quantum adversary. And uh, this would uh, bring us to Tita CP, which is an abstraction of OCB, in which instead of having offsets and block cipher calls, you have a tweakable block cipher instead. This tweakable block cipher is just a family of block ciphers indexed by the tweak. They make all these uh, block ciphers uh, independent. And well, now you don't have XOR with the, with the offset anymore, and so you don't have the nice periodicity property that we observed. Well, the previous attack doesn't work. But actually, on this precise construction, there is an easier attack that is based on Deutsch's algorithm which sounds a bit weird, because Deutsch's algorithm is actually the, the simplest quantum algorithm there is. It just solves the following problem. With a constant uh, speed up, you are going to uh, find out if a function from one bit to one bit is constant or balanced with a single query. Classically, of course, you need two queries to find out. And there, basically, you're computing the XOR of the two outputs of f with a single superposition query. This is exactly what Deutsch algorithm does. Um, let's use that with our, our Mac function here. So we're going to take a single block, and this is going to be either a zero or one. And we have a function of this block, of this block zero or one. And we truncate the output to a single bit. So now we have a function from one bit to one bit. And with a single superposition query to this Mac, we can obtain one bit of, uh, well, we, we obtain the XOR of the two outputs. So the, 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 uh, the, the part that depends on the IV simply XORs out, and we obtain one bit of encryption of zero plus encryption of one. And we do that for all the bits. So we can reconstruct the value. And uh, once we have this uh, complete value here, we can simply switch a zero block uh, in, the first, in, in the first 80 block for a one block, which means we can query the tag of anything that starts with a zero and force the tag of anything that starts with a one. What happens here is that XORing with an IV dependent value was a sufficient protection classically, but it's not a sufficient protection for a quantum adversary. And this is uh, what Deutsch's algorithm allows to bypass completely. Okay, so this is the first attack. Uh, still, it's not the complete linearization attack. Um, let's try to make life even more difficult for our quantum adversary. And instead of just XORing with an IV-dependent value, we're going to post-compute with an IV-dependent function. So now we have independent uh, tweakable block cipher that just process our message blocks. We XOR everything, and then we post-process with a function. And there, on this construction, um, which actually abstracts out many classically secure Macs, uh, many parallel Macs, such as like Mac, for example. 
So on this construction, Simon's algorithm can be used to make forgeries again. It's going to be used in a different way. So we're going to start a bit like in the attack with Dodge's algorithm, and we're going to uh, take two values for each block. So either 0 or 1. So basically, we replace, instead of calling the Mac with any messages, uh, we're going to restrict the inputs to a single bit blocks. So uh, this single bit inputs is here, b1 to bl. And so we will consider this restricted Mac as a function of an L bit input. And our L bit input here is x. And uh, so this is a function uh, that composes the post-processing and the uh, sum, uh, the internal sum. And now let's have a look at the internal sum. We're going to remark that this internal function that I name h here is an affine function of the input x. Uh, the reason for that is you, you can see that if, I, if we flip one bit of the input x, then we end up XORing, just XORing an input value to the output of h. Uh, because we're just uh, swapping uh, one of the, uh, for example, we're swapping a, a zero block for a one block. So we just have to XOR an input. So algebraically, you can write this down as, as this. h of x is simply, uh, if you view this as column vectors, it's simply like a binary matrix times our L bit input plus a column vector. So this is an affine function of the L bit input x. But a fine function means that if there are too many blocks, because uh, we, have, we have the choice of the number of blocks that we query. So if, let's say, there are more than n or more than n plus 1 block, then we can expect that this matrix ML is going to have a non-trivial kernel. And there are going to be L bit strings such that uh, for each x, x plus alpha, has the same output um, by this function h as x, right? So it's simply this this alpha here is simply going to be a choice of uh, a choice of of input bits, such that if you flip all these input bits, then you reobtain the same value in the uh, just before post processing. So in in the uh, in this. Uh, Anyway, there is a period here uh, because this h was an affine function. And so even when you post-process by, by the function f, you still have a periodic function. And uh, we can recover this period using Simon's algorithm. The only change is that the data complexity has increased because now each of our queries contains a linear number of blocks. So instead of, making, uh, instead of having a data complexity of the order of n, we have order of n squared. But once we have obtained this period alpha, then we can, as before, we can make queries and produce two valid tags for each query we make. So this is, again, a break uh, of the plus one forgeability. There is even more uh, with this technique. So um, actually, when we can attack uh, max of, of the forms that I presented, we can also attack beyond burst debound variants. So beyond burst debound secure max, uh, we are proposed to offer more security against forgery attacks, because usually uh, the, the max such as light max, they offer n over two bits of security against forgery attacks, and we can do better than that. Uh, a very uh, classical approach is to is double hash the approach, where you process your message block independently in two pipes of size n, and then the results are XORed in the end. Now, it's possible to apply, I would say, standard Simon-based attacks on, on, this, uh, on these constructions. But the problem is, you're able to, if you're able to embed a period uh, on one of the pipes, then you don't control the other one anymore, basically. So your complexity is going to be time of applying Simon's algorithm multiplied by doing some kind of Grover search on the second uh, on the second pipe, and uh, it's an n bit value, so it's going to be of the order two to the n over two, basically. In our case, uh, in this context, we can still have a polynomial time attack. 
So I take an example, and that would be like Mac Plus. Uh, here you process all the message blocks, and then uh, in one uh, branch uh, you just store them as before, and in the other one you compute a different linear function because there are multiplications by two all the time. And in the end, you post-process and you XOR to obtain the tag. If, you if we abstract this a bit, uh, we have this. So we, we compute independently all the, all the blocks and then we send them and then we have another linear function. But we can apply the same reasoning as before, uh, except that now when we restrict our inputs to single bits, we will have first a fine function of uh, our L bit input, and we have a second a fine function of our N bit input, which is different, because it's a different linear, uh, it's a different linear mapping of the blocks. But although there are two different affine functions now, we are ensured that uh, as as soon as there are enough blocks, let's say two n blocks, there will be a trivial, a non-trivial vector which is going to be a period of this affine function and of this affine function. And so there is going to be there are going to be periods for the for the full Mac. And the attack applies again. The only difference is that we just had to increase a little the data complexity but just by a constant uh, by a constant factor. So uh, this is going to apply to many examples. And uh, you can see it applies as soon as we process the input blocks independently and then we compute some linear functions of these blocks. And then again, we compute the tag from the outputs of these functions. This is, uh, this is all what we need to, to be able to apply this. Which means that conversely, if you want plus one and fortability, then you need some sequentiality. And we know that actually NMAC, for example, uh, is quantum secure. You need. Uh, you can also you can also use constructions that are IV based, and that uh, use the IV in the processing of all the blocks, not only in the uh, in the final function. And we also know that this works. Now, potentially, uh, but we don't know about that yet. Um, there there could be some uh, some security if instead of using a XOR to uh, to sum all these blocks, you use, for example, a modular additions. It's just that uh, with the modular addition, the attack doesn't work anymore. Uh, but we really don't know what the security would be in the end. So to conclude, there are different ways in which you can see uh, this attack. And in this presentation, I adopted more the quantum cryptanalysis perspective. You have a procedure that is based on Simon's algorithm that is different from uh, the previous approaches and that allows to break uh, many Macs the unforgeability of many Macs and practically all the uh, deterministic and parallelizable Mac constructions that we, that we had so far. Uh, you can also view this from a provable security perspective, because the fact that we have broken these Macs means that they, we can't prove their security uh, in the quantum setting. And now the question remains whether we can design actual efficient parallelizable uh, quantum pseudorandom functions, for example, and quantum secure Macs. Um, also, from a concrete security perspective, well, uh, we have attacks in the superposition setting, uh, but it would be interesting to know whether this has consequences when the queries are only classical, of course. Uh, so, these these are these are interesting open questions, and uh, my presentation ends here. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>